The latest Cardi B clapback, why she's coming for J Jermaine Dupri. Plus, Lil Wayne is quite the bamboozler. And Lil Nas X has two more horses in the back with a brand new remix. Hello, Internet. Welcome to The Download. I'm Denny Director. And I'm Cassie Delora, and we've got our producer, Brianna Sutton, joining us in the control hey. room. Hey, me. TGIF. Oh, yes. Thank goodness. Well, we have to end the week with some drama, of course. <laughs> Party B is not here for Jermaine Dupri, at least his comments on mm -hmm. the current state of rap for women. It all started when Jermaine Dupri was asked the question, who is his favorite female rapper right now? He couldn't say anybody. The thing is, he didn't have an answer. Uh, he did say, quote, I feel like they're all rapping about the same thing. He goes on to say, for me, it's like strippers rapping. Mm -hmm. Now, when you see that quote alone, it's a little like, <gasps> right. you know, gut wrenchy. But for a little context, Jermaine was talking about his friend and longtime collaborator, DeBrat, right. and talked about how she really broke the mold and really broke the glass ceiling for female rappers. Right. Uh, he explained that she was, was the first female solo rapper to go platinum and mm -hmm. basically saying that, he, that she carved a path for right. today's female rappers, right? But he claims that everyone's rapping about the same thing and specifically money and stripping. stripping. Like they're, they're, right. they're past as strippers. So right. a lot of folks were like, is this a pointed diss right. at Cardi B? Because she, of course, was a, a stripper before she was a rapper. And she responded. She mm. was not happy with his comments. She named him by name right. and called him out. And here's a little bit of her response. First of all, I rap about because she's my best friend. You know what I'm saying? And second of all, it's because it seems like that's what people want to hear. So it's like, if that's what people ain't trying to hear, then all right, then I'm going to start rapping about my again. And second of all, there's a lot of female rappers that be rapping their ass off and don't be talking about the don't be talking about, you know, getting down and dirty. And y'all don't be supporting them. Y'all don't be supporting them and they be mad though. These bloggers don't support them. They don't give them the recognition. So don't blame that on us when y'all not the one that's supporting them. Cardi B coming in the defense of female rappers right. everywhere because of Jermaine, Jermaine Dupri's right. comments. Let's ask you guys right off the bat, who do you agree with, Cardi or Jermaine? Now with Cardi, I will say her biggest point, I think, is that actually twofold, mm -hmm. right? One, it's that what she's rapping about, stripping money and as she right. put in her body, uh, is what is selling records. She goes, I'm making money off right. that because that's what people want to listen to. And she brought up Be Careful, obviously, right. another song of hers that wasn't necessarily rapping about stripping or anything like that. It and she personal, said it, it's it intimate. right. And she said that didn't do as well as the songs about her life. Like and money. Exactly, <laughs> and here's my thing with it is, I think personally, in my honest opinion, the key to good music is authenticity, mm. and so what? In her past life, she was a stripper, and she's writing about that because that is her, her life. life. Yeah, it's so true. I think it's better than trying to be someone that you're not, and here's, here's the, the craziest thing to me is, Jermaine says that he wants women to rap about other things besides, you know, stripping and, you know, he wants women to break the mold right now, but yet could not give an example of what he wants them to rap about. Right. Well, you know what? And I will say in his defense, it's because he's also thinking about the early years of hip hop, certainly mm -hmm. for female females in the game. Guys, I'm going to actually bring this up a little bit sooner. Uh, but, you know, there's three rappers, DeBrat being one of them, but there's two right. other rappers that were really pioneers for other female hip hop artists. I'm talking about MC Light. I mean, she was long considered, or has been long considered one of hip hop's pioneer feminists. And her first single, I don't know if you guys know this, she released it when she was 17 years old and it addressed the crack epidemic at the time. Right. So she was addressing things that were happening. And of course, Queen Latifah, her Grammy winning song, UNITY, right. be has become like this anthem for female emp empowerment mm -hmm. and female equity. So I think that's what he's talking about. He's, he's right. missing like that kind of but, rap. But feminism, at least in my opinion, has, has changed. Yeah. It has evolved. This is 2019 and people like Cardi B, and granted I am not as familiar with rap and hip hop. Um, everyone knows I listen to country music and the Jonas Brothers and Celine Dion, but I <laughs> have I oh have gosh. gotten uh, to listen to, I did like a deep dive on Megan Thee Stallion yes. and Brianna thank you for introducing yeah. me to Meg because You're it's welcome. people thank you. 
<laughs> because it's people like Meg and people like Cardi who are, you know, basically embodying the feminism that we need today in 2019 and rap rapping about body positivity and kind of having that having that hustler's mindset. And yes, there's a lot of self sexualization here, but with a twist. They when I listened to Meg for the first time, she made me want to literally go out there and collect my coin yeah. and be a powerful woman in the workforce. I love that. And she didn't write she wasn't rapping about stripping. And if they are, though, to your point, right? It's, it's okay. It's, it's, it's their it's choice, right? Oh, it's all, right. It's their agency. Um, Brianna, I want to bring you in about Megan because she mm -hmm. is, I mean, she's one of hip hop's rising stars, but not at the expense of, you know, the male gaze. Right, right. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? I mean, like, <laughs> she does, like, she is very, like, her lyrics are explicit and, like, she's not afraid to show off her body, but, like, she does all that for herself, not right. because she's trying to impress men exactly. or anything like that. Sexual autonomy. Exactly. And I think, like, the thing with Jermaine Dupree that he didn't realize is, like, I think he kind of lumped everyone together, like, speaking mm. about Cardi B, because mm -hmm. they don't really rap about stripping. Cardi is really kind of the only one out right now that's talking about how she used to be a stripper. And the rest of them will talk about like money and scamming mm -hmm. and like, you know, like Megan talking about just like owning your sexuality and things right. like that. Mm -hmm. And I think because men aren't used to seeing women do that and talk mm -hmm. about things like that, it throws them off. I mean, did he not see Cardi B's song that she wrote for Baby Culture, Turning One? I mean, she does write about other things. It's true, but I want to bring up the second point she made in her response, Cardi B. She also said, there are plenty of other female rappers who aren't rapping about that stuff that get no radio play, right. no mainstream support. Right. And in fact, in a second video, she did shout out some female rappers in the game, killing it that we need to pay more attention to. Take a look. And let me tell you, let me tell you about some rappers that are really dope that be rapping their ass off, and I don't feel like they get the recognition that they deserve. Tierra Wack, Kamaya, Rhapsody. There's this girl called Oraniku. I don't know how to say her name. I don't even know how to say my own real mother name, so don't blame me. But they be rapping their ass off, and I feel like we need to put these girls more in magazines, uh, blogs, blogs, blogs. Y'all need to start putting these girls on y'all blogs. So there you have it. I gotta give it up to Cardi because 100%. not only is she, uh, you know, she's defending herself really and not gonna back down, defending. but she's also giving a platform to all these other artists. She goes, I'm rapping about stripping, but other rappers aren't. Take a look and at them, the watch thing. them, it's, listen to their music. The other women too are rapping and they, they come from a place of pro women. We need to have more women mm. and men supporting each other. And that's that was kind of and my us. biggest and us. irk. We need to listen to their music too. Comments, I feel yes, but is like, that we should be putting everyone on. Yeah, because if, yeah. if you look at like male rap though, what do they talk about? The same you thing. They talk about I, money. I did ask they talk that about cars. There's... They talk about clothes. They talk about right. women. They talk mm -hmm. about all the same stuff. Violence, right? Exactly. There's a so theme. it's like. As soon as they stop talking about that and they talk about real things, they don't get any play either. Just like J. Cole. Like, people love J. Cole, but, like, J. Cole didn't do so well because people's like, oh, he's always talking about, like, his community and stuff like that. He doesn't right. have the bops that I want to hear in the club. So he it's can't like, please everybody. Exa yeah, exactly. Get, apparently. It's that part. But, you know, someone who, uh, a very prolific rapper that everyone loves uh, <laughs> is Lil Wayne. We got to get to Lil Wayne. We got to move okay? on. For Good. all of yeah. you Lil Wayne fans, the rapper is setting the record straight about quitting tour so y'all can have no worries. See, I do know my rap music. That was a pun. He's got a song called No Worries, people. So Lil Wayne took to Twitter uh, just a just recently like saying today. yesterday was crazy but I want all my fans to know I will not be quitting this tour I'm having too much fun with my bros blink 182 and for those of you who are confused and may have not been up to speed for the last uh, 12 hours or so basically Lil Wayne um, kind of tricked us and <laughs> bamboozled us, bam us yeah. threatened to essentially quit his current co-headlining tour with blink 182 and I do believe we have some video of that I just want the people to know, if you're wondering, please forgive me, but I am so not used to performing to a crowd and there's not too many, you know, like steel foam. That's not my swag. I'm not sure how long I'm gonna be able to do this tour, but make some noise for Blink-182 for including me anyway. This might be my last night though. Let's go. Ooh, That's 
it. That's what did it. That's what set Twitter Ooh. on fire. This might be my last show. He did not complete his set, nor did he uh, complete his sentences. So right. I was unsure of what he was saying. But it sounds like, at least to me and, and my little old ears, that he was just not happy maybe being the the artist before Blink-182 or not a, a big enough crowd for him. Is that well, what you he, took away from that? He did kind of uh, allude to the fact that the size of the crowd was, quote, not his swag, right? right? But the fact that he, if in fact he feels uh, a certain way about opening for Blink-182, that's probably <laughs> something you should have thought about before, before you signed, signed on, on to, do to the, the tour. tour. Yeah. But he, he says he's not quitting. I don't know if it's because, because like, I mean, they're technically both headlining and they have right, another co-headlining. Co co yeah. yeah. So I think really what it is is just like, I don't think there were too many of his fans there, I think mm. might have been the issue. is because like, when you think about it, it's Lil Wayne, Blink-182, and then their opener is someone named Neck Deep. And you won't really find like a lot of rap and hip hop fans who would be going to a concert like that only to see Lil Wayne. You know, well, they would only be going to Well, that's when you have the challenge of getting new fans, it's right? Awesome. Exactly. And doing something like that. Exactly. Just doesn't really. Although get in this fans. photo, they totally look like they could hit the road, they together, do. don't they? <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, Lil Wayne's been on the rock tip for a while, so it, it made sense mm -hmm. for him to go on tour with Blink 182. I just think, I guess he just expected more of his fans mm. to be at the concert than. Maybe. Actually, yeah. that's a really good point, Brianna. Yeah. I, I think he's vibing off the crowds, right? And he's yeah. already 10 shows in. Well, I think um, those fans, though, that were there for him expected a little more from him than the 10 songs that he did when he yeah. was supposed to do uh, reportedly 30. Right. Well, he says he's going to be at the Banger uh, show tomorrow, which is oh. today. So, or actually tomorrow, yeah. So he hasn't quit. He he's hasn't still quit. with Blink-182. <laughs> Someone else who hasn't quit, Lil Not Nas X. Not at all. You guys first came Old Town Road with Lil Nas himself, and then came the remix, which added Billy Ray Cyrus, of course. Now we've got two more horses in the back. We've got Young Thug, who has hopped on this latest remix, and mm. my personal favorite, my Mason, Ramsey. Mason Ramsey. Yes. Yodel Boy, take a listen. Hop up in my razor, got a thousand acres, ride up on the cows with a spray that it don't face. So I owe, I owe, give the yoke I have. If you ain't got no giddy up, then giddy out my way. I'm gonna take my horse to the old town road. I'm gonna ride till I can't no more. Just when I thought I, I was God. over Old Town Road, <laughs> they bring in this swaggy little kid. Come Did on. Did you see that hop up on my razor, razor. in my razor? So youthful. I love this. But you guys, my personal favorite lyric of them all, it is something that Mason tweeted too because everyone, oh everyone is talking about it. If you don't got no giddy up, then giddy out my way. I think you spelled giddy up wrong. But... <laughs> Giddy up and giddy out, out my, my way. way. An icon for the ages, 12 years old, hopping on the latest Old Town Road remix. And I will say, I love you, Billy Ray, but this was fire. This was everything I needed. And here's why I also love it, though, because of course, Mason, he first got attention because him yodeling at that Walmart right. went completely yeah. viral. Lil Nas X started as a viral star, too. Yeah. So bring these two powers together. I mean, come on. I'm so here for it. And Lil Mason is having so much fun promoting the heck out of this he's single. He's a social media king. I don't know if he made these himself, but you guys, he's like photoshopping Lil Nas himself and, of course, Billy Ray <laughs> into these, and Young Thug, right here into these old timey photos. Oh, not just that either. There's also a Photoshop of them as astronauts too, if we can pull that up. I'm telling you, he has so much fun with the social media. He says the song is one giant leap for mankind. I feel it. I think it's that major. But listen, my personal favorite, I don't know if we got this one in or not yet, I'm going to pull it up on my phone too, is he tweeted, he, he kind of had the thought that a lot of people right have. Right here. The year is 2043. I'm fully grown up with my own ranch and kids and... <laughs> Well, Lil Nas, Lil Nas X is still releasing Old Town remixes. But here's the thing. They say don't fix something that's not broken, but it's good. I love the addition of Mason. Hey, and props to Lil Nas X and his and team because, listen, when you have the number one record in America for consec multiple consecutive mm -hmm. weeks, this is how you maintain that. And like the summer has yeah. just begun. He is trying to nab that spot for Song of the Summer, and I don't blame him. And Mason is, is kind of it. out of left field. A lot of people maybe have me. thought Miley Cyrus would have jumped on a remix with her dad. I know mm. she loves Lil Nas. Do a different song with Miley. Right. 
But I'm not going to lie. I thought maybe Miley would hop on the song. So having Mason in us, I would have never expected Mason. But it's like it's like a little Christmas present that you don't expect, and then you love it. All I can say is thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but here's the best part. You know how there's like a lot of, uh, I zoomed in on this photo, but um, there is the album cover. There's a lot of extra white blank space in the background, uh -oh. and he keeps adding horses. Uh -oh. So really, Mason might have a point. It may be 2043, and he's still adding horses to the song. He's still adding people. We might get remixes so, for days. So who ages. do you guys think should be on the next Old Town Road? Oh, wow, I can't even say it. <laughs> Old Town Road remix. Say Shania that. Shania Twain. Shania Twain. He tweeted at Mariah, so maybe Mariah Swear? Carey. Yeah, That's he said okay. Mariah Carey, we're gonna See, hop on this remix. He's crossing genre. I'm kinda mm -hmm. here for Shania though. Okay, That'd yeah. Cool. I mean, she's an MVP. Lil Nas X is an MVP. Mason's my MVP. Speaking yeah. of, yeah. it's time to get to our MVP today. The most viral post. From horses to aliens, it's just another day on the download, <laughs> y'all, okay? Area 51 is getting some uh, Major talk play. today. Yeah. Yeah. There are more than 400,000 people who have signed up for this public Facebook event, you guys, called Storm Area 51. They can't stop all of us. So basically, the idea is that we all meet up at the Area <laughs> 51 alien site, which has become a tourist attraction, and coordinate our right. entry, essentially. And almost half a million people, you guys, have already RSVP'd yes. Some people are still, uh, hey, gotta check my schedule. Some people are still a maybe, but they're ready for this. I am so anti the, the, the Literally, the slogan is like, let's see them aliens. How about not? Should, I'm good. Should E.T. take on the E.T. life? Girl, I don't <laughs> extra, need it. Out of, sight, out of sight, out of sight, out of mind. Have y'all not seen Independence Day? Okay, we know what happened. I'm not trying to be there. That's why we need to go and release them. No, Free the aliens. <laughs> why do we need them? Let them live among us. Don't fix no. them, that's not broken. There's enough people on this planet. Bring that on act like Maybe they'll take us off planet. Then that's I, even better. I don't want to go. Maybe we can go <laughs> finally find boyfriends on another planet. See, exactly. Okay, all right, you're changing my tune a little bit. Maybe the there. aliens all are right, hot. Guys, Is okay. that what it took, all right, Jenny? That's all I'm no, seriously, maybe it's because I'm like, in the middle of Stranger Things, I'm just on edge with all of this yeah. stuff. Like, no, thank you. And what you guys are seeing is social media reactions to people uh, finding out about this Facebook event. And I mean, people, people, some people are here for it. Some people aren't. Some people say that this is the aliens at Area 51 asking the scientists if they can try fettuccine Alfredo. <laughs> <laughs> Look, am I missing something with that one? No, it's just because fettuccine Alfredo is so good. Why wouldn't an alien want to try fettuccine That's Alfredo? That's what we want to share with them? Yes. F fettuccine Alfredo. That's our gift Maybe to some in and We can bring them some In-N-Out Burger from and LA. And garlic bread. Honestly, yeah. guys, hard pass. Hard pass. Uh, but bro. internet, are you guys going? Let us know in the comments below. All right, guys, that does it for the download. Thank you so much for joining us this week. If you liked what you heard and you like. have any answers to these CTAs, the call to actions, including will you guys go to Area 51, please let us know in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, heart. <laughs> Get that plug in. Like, subscribe. All right, you guys. Comment below. Bye.